Good day, everyone. Well, um, we have a market that continues to uh, tiptoe higher. Um, a lot of uh, the press um, have said that uh, it's a kind of market environment that um, doesn't seem to be uh, definitive in either direction because we're getting lower volume days and the market's tiptoeing higher, and we've seen this pattern before. But nevertheless, what we have seen um, over the last few years, and we've reiterated this many times to our members, um, and that is it's a market of stocks. So even though there might not be much opportunity um, in an index that just is baby stepping its way higher, uh, there can be and has been um, abundant opportunity on, in this case, the long side. Um, and uh, case in point would be uh, our report on Cy uh, CyberArk Software, CYBR, um, that has zoomed uh, beyond, well beyond 50% since we uh, first issued a pocket pivot on that stock. And then we have Intrexon as well, which had a viable gap up and has moved higher since then. And uh, in this kind of market, um, and I, I used to say this actually um, when I was on tour with O'Neill, um, that the chance, the trade of a lifetime uh, comes along every few weeks if you're ready for it. Uh, and part of being ready for it means you don't get discouraged by a difficult environment. You run your screens like we do every day. Uh, when we do see things like CyberArk and Intraxon, then we notify everyone um, that we do think it is an actionable position. And uh, then it's about uh, taking a solid position in that stock. Um, when the getting is good, you should make sure that you buy up to your risk limits. Um, and that is to say, that yes, uh, the markets uh, have many times thrown many investors uh, a curveball and uh, that makes investors gun shy. And we've seen this time and time again, whether this is the roaring 90s or uh, more recent years, uh, people get gun shy and so when you get a good stock like, like uh, CyberArk, um, you might have only gone in on a very small position. Um, I guess it's a very fine line balance between being able to say, okay, I'm going to go in a, with a fuller position because this looks right and I'm going to protect my profits because that's the kind of market we're in versus uh, going in with a smaller position and maybe adding to it uh, should the trade uh, be going in your favor. Um, but we've said many times you want to be taking your profits in this market um, with something like CyberArk, it's just gone through the roof in just a matter of a few days. So you get your profits very quickly and then you don't want to be a pig and, um, and overstay your welcome. Um, but uh, I remember you know, many times in a lot of these books, uh, I'm sure we've all recall, reading, uh, if you're going in on a very big position that's bigger than what your risk tolerance level is, then you're liable to mishandle the trade. In other words, if the trade starts to go against you, even by a small amount, you might sell it too soon. And on the other hand, you might become a pig and uh, if the stock is showing signs of um, exhausting itself, in other words, you've got your profits, you might become a pig and overstay your welcome and then give back more profits than you had to. And of course, I'm sure, you know, as ex experienced in investors, we've seen this time and time again. So we have to walk that, that balance between uh, knowing ourselves as traders and what risk levels we're willing to take on in uh, the, on the particular environment that we're in, uh, the quality of the stock, quality of the pocket pivot, quality of the viable gap up, um, and then uh, put our position uh, accordingly so that we can maximize our profits. But, you know, again, I think I'm preaching to the choir. I think this is all textbook stuff. And, of course, it takes a lot of practice to get to the point where it becomes much more fluid and automatic uh, as traders. Now, as far as uh, the markets overall, um, you know, you've got oil that uh, has been languishing um, as after it bounced. Uh, there's oversupply reports uh, going on. Um, it's very possible this uh, oil will be uh, hitting new lows. Um, I know some analysts were, say, were calling for $10 oil, uh, but it, nevertheless, wherever it goes, it goes. And um, you know, same with the uh, Commodity Research Bureau, the CRB index. It, uh, it's also kind of tracing out a similar pattern, and it could retest lows. But that's neither here nor there. Um, we are a market of stocks, and we are always going to be vigilant on finding the next big name on the long or short side uh, so we can act on it. Gil? Yeah, great points, Dr. K. I think you kind of hit the nail right on the head. And I think, uh, you know, people will tell you uh, that uh, 
a market and uptrend, but uh, you know it's it's hard to make money. Breakouts are far and few between, and, and that's because if you're paying attention to breakouts, you're missing pocket pivots. You're you're unable to buy viable gap ups because you don't know how to handle them, uh, and you basically are in denial of the utility of things like pocket pivots and viable gap ups as as valid buy points, and they work. And in this market, I think that gives you the edge that you need to make money in individual stocks. And that's the name of the game. Uh, I got to tell you, I'm pretty excited about the market. And uh, Dr. Kane and I were talking about this earlier. It's like, despite the fact that, yeah, the indexes are moving higher and they're tiptoeing higher, and the volume isn't all that great. And and you know, you can read your favorite newspaper and they'll fret all about it. Uh, but the fact is, all you need is like a couple of these, and you're making a lot of money. And uh, CyberArk on the upside, and Trexon is working on the upside. Facebook yesterday launching higher uh, through. The 50-day, I mean, you even look at names like uh, Palo Alto Networks making a new high and just keeps trucking higher. Starbucks, after the Bible gap up here, has continued higher. Not going to blow your socks off with the huge upside, but it's it's cruising along. Um, <clears throat> you know, even names like Zeltique, which we picked up as a pocket pivot down in here, have continued to, to move higher. Uh, Lanet, which we picked up down here on a Bible gap up here, that actually held. But there's also a pocket pivot, I think, right here that we also picked up on, and another Bible gap up, and that thing's off to the races now. You know, the, your favorite newspaper will tell you to buy it here on a breakout, and so far that's working. But you're up a couple three percent. But the place to really catch the juice in these things is down along in the roundabout, and you cannot do that unless you are using pocket pivots. Uh, on the roundabout formation to buy stocks, and and the opportunities are there. So if you're missing them, um, you know, and a, a few days ago, I get an email from somebody whining that our ideas are ill-timed and lose money. And uh, I don't know what planet they're on, but they're not paying attention to what's going on. And so if you're fixated on something else, and you're not open to what's happening in real time, and you're letting the media and the news scare you, just remember it's a market of stocks, and so operate on that basis first, and uh, and forget about uh, what the indexes necessarily are doing. I think they're in a position to pull back. They should hold the top of uh, this range here. So you got this range going sideways, so it could pull back in. You, got, you can see the 10-day barely. I could probably make that. Let me make that a little bit thicker here. Uh, let's see, so everybody can see it. Maybe make it a, a darker color while we're at it. Here we go, and there you go. And you can see the 10-day line down here. You could pull down into the 10-day line or close to the top. That would be normal. Or you could just sit sideways and hang in tight. If you look at the S&P, it's more or less been trying to do that, and it's just barely out of its range. So it could pull back into the 10-day uh, into the, uh, moving average. I'm going to fix this one, too. Make these a little more visible for everybody. Uh, so you know, that, I think you could pull back, and that would be normal. And I wouldn't really get uh, my panties in a bunch over it. Um, so uh, one name that you can see it's it starts up to the upside is data, and it's trying to get through this hundred level. And you had a pocket pivot yesterday. You you close in the upper part of the range, but not just above mid range on higher volume. I noticed that somebody keeps coming in and selling it at a hundred. Let me check on a intraday chart this morning on what's going on with the stock. Uh, here we go. And there it is right now. You can see uh, it comes up here, and, and now it's getting hit with some volume. But I think it may take a little bit of time to get through the 100 level. My guess is if the market continues higher, then you'll see it get through eventually. Meanwhile, the 10-day line becomes your uh, downside guide for a near-term stop, and I'm going to fix all these charts here and make them a little bit uh, thicker and darker so that you can see them a little better. Uh, let's see, what else? Should we do the 50-day a little darker too? How about that? Let's see. Anyways, um, you can actually see eSignal is a pretty good charting program. Uh, it works pretty well. Anyways, uh, and, and then there's the unorthodox plays that I think are also things you have to look at. For instance, this FireEye is a, is a viable gap up from way down in the pattern. If you look at the weekly chart here, um, let me fatten this up. It comes off the lows, uh, and, and you get this Bible gap of type move, which is unorthodox, but it works. And I think within the context of what you're seeing uh, in the overall cybersecurity space, with CyberArk uh, taking the lead here, 
I think uh, you could have taken a shot at that one. Twitter is one I own, uh, and on the Bible gap up, you had to move up. There's some uh, overhead on the left side of the pattern. That's pretty obvious here, but it's working its way up. You had to pull back to the 10-day yesterday that held as volume picked up slightly, and that was constructive. So it's trying to go higher, and I think another thing is that if you're seeing other social networking names trying to set up and go higher, like Facebook, and of course LinkedIn on the Bible gap up, which is still holding. It's not going anywhere. Uh, but it held the 10-day uh, on uh, Wednesday and bounced off the 10-day. Here's the Bible gap up, and and it's holding in tight. Volume is drying up. Uh, if we look at, let's check. Uh, I'm going to update the, our HGI real quickly on an intraday basis, so we'll get some updated uh, prices here and volume levels. Uh, other thing to note is there's a, well, today there's a news about Greece, and of course Greece is being intransigent. Uh, even though there are spend freelies like everybody else uh, in the Western world, including the United States, but uh, they're they're looking for more bailouts and more debt. Uh, and I think what what is uh, Dr. K? What's the the amount of debt that Greece has, and that they're looking to be continually bailed out? It's like a three hundred billion euros or something like that. It's appreciable enough to know that Greece has been in trouble for a long time, and it just uh, rather than you know the amounts aren't so important. Rather, it's just. The uh, I think the expectancy of the life expectancy of the euro um, is uh, is shorter by the by the moment, you know, because I I, I just don't think um, it can the, the European uh, countries can hold it together, and uh, Greece is obviously one issue, but so are other countries, and um, I think we're going to start to see more and more um, of these uh, fall by the wayside, uh, probably within the next you know this could happen within the next uh, you know couple of years. Yeah. And I, I think that the thing is, uh, it creates some panic but that I don't think is necessarily justified. I think if Greece exit the eurozone, I think that's a positive, personally. Uh, and then let them dangle on their own. They can go back to the drachma and, and devalue it till uh, till the cows come home. And and then start to clean out some of these excesses, at least with respect to Greece. And if other countries have to drop out, then so be it. But I think that the EU is probably a bad idea to begin with, and you're seeing the results of that now, and, and I think it will clean itself out. And somehow I tend to think that the Europeans as a group are more likely to sur uh, work to clear out excesses more so than the U.S., I think. I don't know. The, the U.S., on the other hand, can probably has more room to uh, print money if you use Japan as a precedent. Um, would you agree there, Dr. K? Do you think that QE4 is feasible for the U.S.? I think, yeah, the U.S. is going to be digging itself an even deeper hole because it can, and that's the danger there. Um, you know, and Japan, of course, being this, was the second largest economy, and it was able to dig a very nice hole for itself uh, from the 1990s onward. Yeah. And it's not really recovered, um, and that is this, the, the issue with the U.S. that the U.S. is facing now. I think it's making the wrong moves, you know, in terms of um, economic longevity. Yeah. And, uh, as we know, it's it's it is such a debtor nation. Um, I mean, all the debtor nations combined are like in debt to something like 57 trillion and and counting. Uh, so that can't be good. Um, yeah. So we're going to see some changing of the guard, as we always do. I mean, this is nothing new in history. There's always a changing of the guard every few decades. Um, it just happens, and so we're a witness to this. And the question is, how long it's going to take um, for this imbalance to correct itself? Yeah, in the near term, I think the Greek news is just a red herring, and uh, I think it's already been uh, handled by the banks that have, have exposure, and a lot of it's been offloaded to uh, the, the central banks, I think, or, or was set to be with the new QE program going into effect next month in Europe. And so I think that it can be absorbed, and so there, it'll create pullbacks in the market that I think uh, in turn create buy opportunities. Um, you know, this morning I was watching some of my names. Facebook went uh, slightly negative. Twitter went flat and then has turned around. It's up nearly a buck now. Uh, you'll see data. Try to get above 100 and then pull to the low 99 level. I think that's where it can be bought. Uh, another name that I'm long here that I, I like is uh, Grubhub. Uh, I thought on the pullback, you know, we talked about this one last week on Friday when I did the stock hunting webinar, intraday stock hunting webinar. The pullback into the 10-day line on the news that Yelp is buying Eat24, which is really small potatoes um, compared to uh, to Grub. They're about one-tenth of their revenues, I believe, or one-eighth of their revenues. So Grub has much bigger space. And, and the overall business is uh, the industry, the uh, 
mobile app takeout, you know, order industry uh, is supposed to be as much as nine to ten billion going forward. So Grubhub could be taken out. In the meantime, if you look at the weekly chart, it's trying to come up the right side, and you'll notice that last week it closed at the peak of the range on heavy volume. Even though it was down, it shows blue on the weekly range because it opened lower for the week than it closed. That's how I color code my charts. It's, it's a sort of a candlestick sort of thing uh, where it will show up blue if, if it, the close for the week or the day is uh, up relative to uh, the open, in this case, on the weeklies. And, uh, and so we're trying to go higher. So it's trying to form like a cup and a handle. It looks a little deep, but I can change that if I want to, see how it suddenly looks a lot flatter. Uh, but And that looks okay. And if you close up near the peak uh, this week, then I think stock has potential to go higher. I think that the thing is to take advantage of the pullback. This is a little bit of a sloppy Bible gap up because you came straight up off the lows. And then the pullback into the 10-day line, uh, you see volume dry up here. And uh, I bought the stock right there. It runs up. I'll sell it in here as it moves to the highs and then buy it back yesterday off of the 10-day line. You had a pretty good volume uh, dry up or voodoo day yesterday. And it looked pretty good. So I'm noticing Twitter up a buck thirteen now. Uh, Facebook back over eighty. I think Facebook's headed to a hundred if the market keeps going higher. Also notice that index is now uh, the Dow is uh, down sixty three, and we we got down I don't know as much as hundred and five. I don't really pay attention to the index. I just watch my stocks, and I think that keeps you in good stead. Uh, I sold Cyber just under sixty, and of course it's up another ten percent. But I think. The way I operate, I buy heavy positions, and then if I get a big move, I'll sell into that and then wait for it to set up again. Now, this thing should, I, I think it's probably running out of gas. Of course, I thought that the other day, and I was wrong. Uh, but they'll always go a little bit higher on me. The trick is, the way I like to operate is with a huge position. And so if, the, if I get a big move with a huge position, well, the amount you make is position size times price move. And if you have a tiny position size, you get a big price move. You don't make anywhere near as much as you do if you have a huge position size and you get a big price move. And so I'll want to take that, and that was the way I operated last year. Although, you know, I've talked about it before, is uh, CyberArk being the FireEye of last year when FireEye just went bonkers uh, whoop, where are we? in January of last year. But it was a little steadier on the upside. So you had a Bible gap up and a move higher uh, off the 10-day line. So we haven't even seen Cyber's 10-day uh, line have a chance to catch up to the stock. But I would be watching that because my guess is you might get a sharp yank back uh, into the 10-day line, and that would probably be the next buy point. So that looks okay. Um, some other names uh, I want to go through. Software, uh, I'm sorry, um, Skyworks Solution. I don't know why I want to call it Software Toolworks, but it's been hanging tight along here uh, and acting pretty well. Another one, it's a semiconductor. Its code is acting well, but they're going to be merging with Cypress Semiconductor, which I think is probably positive for both companies. You'll notice they're, they're kind of hanging along. I'd be watching for pocket pivots here. Actually, I think, I'm not sure if you've got, now you didn't get one here, but you can see it's acting well. So you also see the market's trying to rally. We're down 57 now, so it's starting to turn. Um, Vasco Data, this is... Uh, I actually bought the stock on the on the Bible Gap Up Day, and I sold it after hours because somebody was punching it up to 29. That was on Friday afternoon, and so I took it. And of course, it gapped up a little higher, and I, I bought a position back at about 30.10, and 29.70 at that point was the intraday low. And so, in my mind, once it breaks through that, it's gone. And I, I sold it, and then the thing just went bonkers and slid all over the place. Now. In this situation, the question arises, you know, if you, if you pull back in uh, and you dry up, the volume dries up, would you buy the stock? Dr. K, what is your take on this in terms of its viability? Do you think this is uh, one you don't want to touch? Well, where it's at right now, uh, you know, I mean, it's had such a sloppy, you know, tug of war um, on its earnings report. And uh, what a lot of these stocks sometimes do afterwards, they, they do get, they do remain in kind of a volatile fashion, so there's more noise in the pattern right now. I'd wait for it to settle down before uh, considering uh, doing anything with this kind of name. But yeah. I do like the overall uh, the, the company, the overall price progress before. I think it very well could set up and go again, but I'm going to wait for the pocket pivot. Yeah, there will be something in here. Um, I'd watch for a voodoo pullback as well. So you notice uh, Tesla is on fire here. And uh, I've actually talked about this one as probably being uh, sold out. And for the main reasons, if you look at a couple of things here on the weekly chart, first of all, you have one, two, 
three waves to the downside. And once the stock has three waves to the downside, in my studies of short sale setups, they'll, they'll tend to go off on a rally, and that can carry for a while. And then maybe it rolls over again later. But for now, that was pretty much it. And you could see it on the day of earnings where you gap down on huge volume and you close near the peak of the daily range. So that's telling you you're kind of washed out. And then as it's drifting higher, it looks like it's wedging, but uh, the, the, and this can fool you. So you know, you'll know you think it's, it's wedging, but really what it's doing is it's kind of washed out. There's no more sellers based on this action here. So this is your clue, this day here. And then it wedges higher, but that's mostly because there are no sellers. And unless you see the sellers come back in, so volume picking up on the downside, this thing has the potential to go higher, and it's moving another, uh, it was up seven yesterday, it's moving up another, what, five, 486 today, so cruising along. Uh, another name to keep an eye on here is Virgin America. They actually came out with great earnings, uh, and they ran into the 50-day, uh, they, they beat pretty handily, even though there was talk that their expenses were rising because they were un unhedged on fuel costs, but apparently... The report I read uh, stated that they were realizing gains or, or savings from uh, declining fuel costs. And they're also moving into the Dallas uh, hub, I guess, as, as another route. And so what you're seeing here, if we look at this, let's, um, let me update this one more time. I'm going to pull this up. Just give that a second. But you're seeing it pull back in after hitting the 50-day, which is logical to me. you got some overhead in the pattern, but it could be setting up at a new base. So I'd be watching this as it pulls into the 20-day. And I think I'll make that a little thicker as well. This is a, a new computer, so uh, I haven't had a chance really to get down to the details of getting everything just tweaked the way I want it. But anyways, you can see it coming into the 20-day moving average, which is a net moving average I use frequently, a 20-day exponential. And uh, it looks like it's it's happening. But if we look at the warehouse view here, I'm going to go to, since, uh, let's look at... Uh, <clears throat> my buy list here and is there VA in here uh, I'm going to take this off I don't think I don't think I have it on the buy list right now I'm going to add it right now so you see how we do that edit group um, VA add Click OK, and it's going to want to recalculate the uh, JIT group index. It's always good to have a uh, index for your uh, <clears throat> for your buy list because it gives you an idea of what your names are doing relative to uh, the rest of the market. So let's see if we can find uh, where are you VA? Here we are. You can see today uh, volume intraday though is 23% above average right now. So you want to see that dry up some more. Uh, and and ge in general, what I'll do this if this is my buy list, I'll line it up this way, and you can see where you're drying up. So this is kind of an interesting name. Let's see if we can get this to come up. Fibrogen, and then I'll go back up the list. Freescale pulling in and it's drying up as it comes into the 10-day line. Michael's company is pulling into the 10-day line on light volume. Uh, Acorn. Pulling into the 10-day, you can see now we're down 53, so the market's slowly moving higher. BCA Antec pulling into the 20-day line. Zeltik pulling in on light volume. So if we look, we can double-check here. We can see it's minus 47.3%, so it's light for this time of the day. Uh, Armor Holdings, this has been a surprising name. Every time it pulls back to the 10-day, you buy it, I guess, and it's continued higher. Uh, Zio Farm pulling into the 10-day on light volume. Now, we talked about this one last Friday, and I was skeptical of this initially uh, based on the fact that it is uh, a thin stock relatively, but what you're seeing is average daily volume has increased to 3.3 million shares, so you're now running well above uh, $30 million in daily buying volume, so it's becoming a bigger stock, and at, at 9 bucks, you know, I'm not the sort of person who prides myself on buying something at seven and it's at nine and a half. I pride myself more on buying, loading up something huge at uh, 30 and watching it go to 70 or something like that. Uh, but it is growing up here, and so I think it is. it does bear watching. I know uh, my urologist had told me about this stock a couple of years ago when I had my surgery, and he had mentioned that they're working on uh, uh, 
substitutes for antibiotics, which uh, the uh, bacteria are are uh, developing resistance to, and so they need other things to fight infections. And this company is behind that, and they're also involved with Intrexon, which we know has been a good name, and I talked about that, I think, two or three weeks ago uh, on the, these webinars or one, a webinar. There's Spansion. Amberell is a dog. Not sure what's up with them. They come out with earnings in a couple of weeks, but that thing's not really doing anything. Uh, Insys Therapeutics seems to be hanging well along the 10-day line. Earnings come out first week of March. You can see that here on the right side. JD.com has continued higher, and it's had some pocket pivots on the way up. You can see there's one uh, here, I believe, off of the 10-day. It's way down in its pattern, however. If we go check it out, so it is trying to, to roundabout, and so you are getting these roundabout pocket pivots if we look at, uh, I guess right here is one, right here is one. Uh, I guess you could say that's one as well. So you're getting some of these. It's trying to turn. Meanwhile, Baba, which is a piece of garbage, continues lower and looks to me like it's just ledging en route to moving lower. So looking a little bit doggy to me, but in any case, um, let's go back to the... Uh, charts here. So what I'm doing right now is I'm moving up my list. I start at the bottom and I am uh, looking at names that are drying up and volume. So now you can see we're getting to the point where you're turning back and you're looking at positive uh, volume. Let me get back on track here. Where was I? Here we go. Uh, LinkedIn you can see is vo volume is drying up. Uh, if we look at the the this guy here, let me I should probably shrink it so we can see the two side by side. Here we go. How's that? There we go. Uh, LinkedIn is running minus 25.7 percent. I think it's probably getting ready to go uh, higher and coming off the 10 day. So you know what's set up here is potential for a continuation pocket pivot. You want to watch for that, or you can try and buy the voodoo pullback minus 25.7 percent. Uh, I like to see minus 35 or 40 or lower that, for a voodoo pullback. So the you know the names down here at the bottom of the list minus 39, minus 47 down here. These are the names that I think uh, are showing the voodoo type action right now. Now things could continue to develop with LinkedIn today. It's still very early in the day, and it may continue to dry up. So you want to keep an eye on that. Uh, Cavium had a breakout, and now it's pulling in. It, this may be viable on the pullback, watching the, the uh, volume, which is 20, minus 20.6 right now. And we could do something real quickly just to update this again since it's been a few minutes that we've been on this. I'll get to some questions in just a second, everybody, so hang tight. And let's just let that uh, <clears throat> update. It, it updates pretty quickly. And if you ha I have a new computer uh, with uh, an SSD drive, a new PC, it's... Uh, very fast, and so it updates all this stuff. I'm running a lot of stuff on it right now, and even with all the programs I'm running, from trading platforms to quote systems to uh, you know iTunes to uh, HGS Investor Software, all that, it's running it pretty well. So you know, I, I might suggest for those of you who want a fast system, look into a PC or a laptop with an SSD drive, and make the investment. Uh, and usually you may have to have it customized. I would not go to Best Buy. They're, they're, they pretty much suck in terms of providing you with the most uh, uh, efficient and fast uh, hardware. I, I, go to, I like Fry's. I don't know if anybody has a Fry's in their neighborhood, but I go there. And they, the machines that they have there on sale are, are geared towards uh, gamers and people who uh, need uh, high-performance computers. And so they'll, they can accommodate you much better, I think, than someplace like Best Buy, which maybe you can get a, an SSD drive. Uh, Dr. K, you have an SSD drive in your laptop, don't you? Yeah, for a long time now. I mean, yeah. they're great technology. It, it hauls everyone ass, right? What's that? Yeah, I mean, everyone should have one on their boot drive, always. Yeah, so, you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, Anyways, let's see. Market slopping around. I, I think you're going to see it uh, perhaps react on a short-term basis to the Greek news as it comes out, but I don't really see that as anything significant. I wouldn't let it shake you out of positions that are working and holding up. So you want to hang, try and hang in there. 
Uh, let's see, Electronic Arts, that's one I've been keeping on hanging along the 10-day, Trinet hanging along the 10-day. Here's one we talked about last week when it was tight along the 10-day and showing some dry up uh, voodoo type action here along the 10-day. It's moved higher. Earnings come out in a couple weeks, however. Uh, Taser is hanging in there. Earnings come out next week. This thing's doing okay. Um, here's a five-day pocket pivot you can see with the blue bar there. So in other words, it's a f five days uh, highest volume. Or, or volume that's higher than any down volume over the prior five days. Uh, Mercado Libre is trying to round about. You got Barracuda is trying to come back. This is another cyber uh, security name, and it has continued uh, to, to try and uh, move higher after bottoming out in here. It looked kind of ugly after earnings, and I know we were talking about it. I think there's a viable gap up here, and it failed pretty quickly. And you can see the importance of sticking to a stop here, because then you wouldn't have to sit through all this crap, and now you can kind of you know gauge the thing based on what it's doing. It may come back, but it's a thin stock. Trades only 321,000 shares, so it's kind of tiny. Biomarin coming out of it. Uh, I think Tessera is probably likely to turn higher. After earnings, it, it had gapped out, and then after earnings came in, now it's hanging along at 10A. It may try to go higher. That's one to keep an eye on. Uh, Sierra Wireless, just watching this one as it tries to round about. Paul Alton Networks, you saw, just continuing higher today. I'm watching the solar. Solar City got raked yesterday. But some of these other names might be trying to go higher. Uh, here's Southwest Air trying to go higher. Just watching things here. Yeah, down 63 on the down. Nasdaq down 11. Uh, what's volume looking like, Dr. Kerr? Are we uh, running heavy volume this morning? Let's see. Uh, Market's been really trading light, so you know the last. Yeah. Uh, so I don't really you know, see any big issues here. Uh, Barrett trying to come around. Here's another roundabout. I think the roundabouts are, are some of your best patterns. Here's one we talked about last week. Remember GW Pharmaceuticals and pointed out that it's been holding tight along here. And I think you've got five-day pocket pivots in here. It's moving higher. So earnings came out. They don't have earnings again until May. And uh, it, has progressed. It, it didn't go anywhere. I think this is the day of earnings. And it's tried to come around and set up again. Skywork Solutions, I think, is just setting up along the 10-day. And it's probably going higher. Uh, I would use pullbacks into the 10-day on voodoo type volume signatures to buy it. Agios uh, Pharmaceuticals, if I'm pronouncing that right, is uh, just pulling back. It's below. It's violated the 50-day and trying to sit along the 20-day. So this one has been a disappointment. It started out pretty good uh, here, but has sort of failed and not looking too good going code red. Here's Intrexon, which is building a little cup with a handle, and that looks great uh, as far as I can see. I would use a pullback to the 10-day line as a potentially opportunistic entry point. Virgin America hanging in there. Uh, volume still running 12% above. So you can see that it's starting to dry up. So you want to watch this one. I think there might be something here uh, that, that uh, and, you know, on the pullback, and it will come out. I keep an eye on this one. I may actually look to take a position later on today, So, but we'll see. Uh, NXP hanging along the 10 day. It's a slow name. Catalan's another one, slow name. Infinera, that's worked. The Bible Gap Up, however, failed and it did. It was able to bounce off the 10 day. And you have had some pocket pivots off the 10 day since then. It's slowly moving higher. Uh, I guess if it was a $175 stock, it would look like it's moving faster, but it's not. It's a $17 stock. So percentage wise, it's doing okay. It's not fast, but it's okay. Baidu, I just have this on. I think it's actually a short now. I had it on priorly on my buy list because I thought it might turn in here. Tried to. We had some pocket pivot type action along here, but it's sort of uh, hanging under the 200 day now, so kind of doggy. This Paycom is an interesting story. Uh, they're supposed to have big earnings growth, and uh, stock moved up on earnings. You had a pocket pivot breakout, and it's hanging tight. I'd watch this thing if you had a pullback into the. Uh, 10-day line, maybe it's viable. This looks interesting. Tried to break out here, failed, which shows you why you got to watch out buying breakouts. But here you had the pocket pivot that was a little better off the 10-day. Or you could have bought the voodoo uh, dry up on the pullback here. But in any case, it's moving hard. It's above the 10-day. Maybe it pulls into the 10-day, uh, which is right around, say, uh, 31 to 32, 31 and a half to 32. Uh, and that looks okay. Amazon is hanging along the 10-day. looks like it wants to go higher. Uh, it was a short sale target for a while, but uh, it, it 
turn and on this gap I was definitely off the table but you can see you got a pocket pivot here off the bottom and if I'm trying to short a stock and I get that sort of move I'll just cover it and get out of the way it may set up again or it may the pocket pivot may fail and it'll roll over again I'll come after it again on the short side but I'm not going to sit there and uh, let my head get ripped off so Qualys is trying to come back after the Bible Gap, but going nowhere fast. It's a thinner cybersecurity name. I, I think the leaders are CYBR and PANW and uh, FireEye, to tell you the truth, as it comes back. Uh, Walt Disney, kind of boring, but notice how it's acting okay. Uh, Spirit Aerosystems, trying to move higher. Uh, Cuervo, as I call it, which is the merger between uh, TriQuint and RFMD, is, is not really doing anything. Metivation trying to round out, and these are stocks showing volume up on the day, I believe. Zetas is, uh, I don't know, this one had a Bible gap, it's trying to move higher, it's more of a buyout play. And uh, I think that's what it's trading on for the most part. Uh, the earnings are okay, uh, but going forward it's not, not so hot. Avago trying to move higher, that's uh, same thing as Skyworks, same business, Home Depot trying to go higher. Lanet, uh, I thought it would build a handle in here, at least bump into the 10 day, and said it broke out. But the buy points were down here, and now you're kind of extended. So I'd be watching for this to come back in or 10-day moving average to catch up. But you can see there's some names. They're going higher. They're acting fine. And you can make money. And if you're on cyber, if you're on Intrexon, even if you're buying unorthodox viable gap-ups like uh, Twitter or FireEye, you're able to make some money. And uh, and it's real money, you know, and it's happening in real time. And it's it has nothing to do with uh, how wonderful the environment is or whatever. The, the bottom line is you got to be a stock picker. And I think that's what we help you do. And the reports you sent out, you got to sift through the, the, the some of them. But I think the opportunities are there. Uh, and so to sit, sit there and, you know, like IBD does and, tell everyone that, oh, it's hard to make money. Well, you know, I guess if you're following old rules, I suppose it is. You can see VDSI has continued to dry up or trying to. I'm showing intraday volume change 151.2%. So maybe this is, uh, it's what you're seeing then, notice there's not much price movement, but heavy volume. And it may be getting support in here. So maybe it's going to try and turn around. So I'm watching Grubhub turn down. I don't really like that. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe I'll dump it and buy VA. We'll see. Then it'll go higher. Go, go. I'm just watching because it's another one of these situations that looks like it might be trying to uh, roundabout here. Let's kind of shrink this. So you can see, you know, this thing's had a long time to build a base, and maybe it's coming out. You're noticing on balance, you're seeing better upside volume than downside volume. So, uh, and I did use their service on a commercial flight a few months ago, and I was very surprised at how. Uh, how fast it was because uh, I run a lot of, of heavy-duty programs and I was running my screens and actually watching the market while in the air and everything was running very well uh, I don't know if it's specific to that particular plane and where we were at the time over the uh, over the country over the mainland US and I'm not sure but but uh, it was pretty good so maybe something to keep an eye on uh, let's see Data is cruising higher. You got uh, Twitter moving higher. I think Twitter's going higher. It, it just feels like it to me. Everyone's just shorter. Here's Sun Power. Like I said, I'm keeping an eye on the solars. I'm not sure you know, if there's anything that exciting here. I'm just watching. Grubhub's kind of dogging us today, but it tends to be a little volatile. It may, again, as it moves up into this area, you've got some people, a lot of volume up here on this Bible Gap up that got shell shocked because they were chasing it up here. And of course, I would never chase something up there like that. I'm opportunistic, I buy down here. Now as you come up in here, you may run into a little overhead and may take some time to work itself off. Similar to what's going on with data, I think there's uh, 100, the 100 level is a psychological era level and that's why Livermore used it as a his century mark rule. If a stock got through a 100 mark or a, another century mark level, uh, it would generally move through. And you can see why that's possible because as, at, such as with, with data, we'll go back to data here. Where are you, Data? Come back. Where'd you go? There you are. Uh, you can see that it's it's trying to push through the 100 level, and it just can't do it. And so, and I'm watching this thing every day, intraday, and uh, 
you'll see a seller, you'll see sellers come in. And I, I saw like 370,000 shares get whacked right off the peak sometime around midday. And somebody comes in and sells it down. You saw it yesterday, draw, it dropped below 98, uh, intraday after trying to get to 100. I think it kissed 100 and then somebody hit it pretty hard. And so what you're doing is you're working off the overhead supply, which also may come, if we look at this in more detail, whoa, too far. Here we go. Yeah, you can see it's coming from the left side of the pattern. I don't know if that's still va valid. It is from uh, about a year ago, so it might, may still be valid. And so it's having a little time, taking a little time to work through it. But the thing is, once it's able to clear that overhead supply, then it should be able to pop. So I think Livermore's rationale for this, and I don't know if it was a rationale, but I think it was his in his mind, why it works is because these 100 levels tend to be psychological barriers for most uh, traders, investors. You, you hear that a lot. And so what happens is sellers will come in there, but then you work them off and you work out the weak hands, and what it does is it sets up a pop through the the century mark level and the thing goes a lot higher and that's what generates the big move so I'm looking for that in this thing and we'll see what happens uh, but I yeah I got my position I bought it on the pullback here because I thought this is a normal pullback uh, two three percent maybe it was a little more than that through the low here of 95.16 I think the low was here it was uh, 91.63, so eh, probably like 3.5%, but I felt that that was more or less uh, normal for stock-like data because I've watched it trade. It's very volatile, and once it started to turn on my 620 chart, on my 620 intraday chart, I, I started buying it like at 93, and it r has run up. So I'm trying to sit with this thing, and we're at 100.50 100 right now, so why don't you guys all buy it and push it up for me, okay? Let's get it to 110. So where was I? CyberArk continuing higher. CyberArk is a monster. Uh, still trading above average. I mean, it's going to pull back, though. And my guess is it's probably just one leg in a continuing move. And so that's pretty much it in terms of uh, what I'm seeing in, on my buy list. We may go, let's go over to uh, all securities here, and, and we'll pull up this. I'll use a filter here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is uh, block out... Uh, Price up with ERG over 180. ERG is comparable to uh, composite rating over, uh, you know, 85 or something like that. Uh, here's some names moving. You can see Salix moving. Uh, Intuit, Bible Gap up there. Mohawk, Bible Gap up. Valiant moving higher on a pocket pivot. This Comscope is moving higher. Had a pocket pivot here and then sold off, and it's trying to move higher. Uh, I don't know if it's thrilling, but Equinix, another name. Now, remember, when I do this, what's it also showing me? It's showing me what's going on underneath the surface of the market. And what we can see here very clearly is that things are looking pretty damn good. Uh, and there's plenty of stuff to buy, and there's opportunities to make money. And if you're sitting on your butt with your finger up your you-know-what, you're missing out. You know, or if you're upset that uh, Dr. K and I aren't uh, unabashed, uh, butt-kissing fans of Bill O'Neill, uh, you know, we, we work there, and our, our work is centered around expanding the envelope or pushing the envelope and figuring out what actually works in an optimal way in the market these days. And when you're stuck with rules that I don't think work anymore or are less efficient or that really prevent you from playing a name like CyberArk, then I think you need to rethink your, uh, your methods. And if you don't, uh, to me, it's adapt or die. And... and uh, so, you know, that's, that's been my main criticism. And Dr. K, you know as well as I do that the statistical work that's done over there is pretty, pretty feeble and pretty thin, in my, in my view. And that's how they come up with rules like the eight-week rule that doesn't work, right? Well, and sometimes they didn't even use statistical reasoning behind it. They were kind of using um, seat of the pants. Um, you know, that's, that, that yeah. was actually the operation behind uh, my market direction model was very early on, you know, I had my own sort of statistical rules, and I and I used uh, the rules that O'Neill talks about in his book, How to Make Money with Stocks. But as anyone who's read that book knows, there's no statistics behind it; it's just observations. But they're powerful observations. So I formulated the the direction model on that on using utilizing um, some of that guidance. You know, and this is way 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 back um, after I'd read the book. Um, so we're talking, you know, good over 20 years ago. Um, well over 20 years ago and uh, yeah I, mean, the, I, I think that um, you know having been there and, and knowing like their statistical concepts and, and what they're employing 
Uh, some of them, sometimes it's good, but I think there's a lot of holes also that exist, unfortunately. Um, and sometimes I think they're, they, are, they can be guilty of uh, overfitting the curve, so we say. So you take a few data points and then you start, you start making too, too firm a conclusion on, on, on data that is not um, as thorough as it could be. You know, and that can run, run you into a lot of trouble on a model. Right, I, and I also noticed in the model book studies, uh, you guys, that one coffee table book, you guys came up with a lot of names, and uh, they were stocks that had had big moves. Uh, and to me, if you really want to find out what works in the market, what you do is you look at every stock that had a big move, and then you look at what were the factors that were relevant, whether they were contextual, thematic, fundamental, whatever technical uh, and then you then you draw your conclusions from that but what he used to do is he would just cherry pick the best ones that seemed to fit like you were saying the curve fitting and so we saw this happen people and uh, I was a little bit shocked by it and uh, to tell you the truth I have some of these uh, copies of model books and if I don't even look at them I mean maybe I'll sell them somebody wants to buy them because they're useless to me I can create my own model books and I can use this system in real time to come up with much better uh, improvements to my methods and techniques that actually work. So that's the whole point. But, you know, my point also is that people get their panties in a bunch over that. It's like, oh, my God, you're criticizing Bill and Neil and you're unprofessional and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, if you're that stupid, then uh, go somewhere else, you know. I, I sure, don't, sure don't need you. But in any case, that's my rant for the day. Uh, as you know, you get one per webinar. It's included with the service free of charge. So, uh Anyways, let's let's just kind of mosey on down the line here. Here's another Bible gap up. Celgene trying to go higher. Um, Boeing trying to go higher. Newmont Mining, a gold stock, trying to go higher on a gap move. Uh, there's Grubhub. Grubhub's trying to get, get its feet. Yeah, I'll give it a little more time. So, I did just buy a little bit of VA here. It's trying to turn positive. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, Taubman Center. So, you know, we're cruising through here. You can see some good stuff. My suggestion to all of you is to buy this, and uh, it's five ninety nine a year, and that's pretty damn cheap, and you can do this yourself. Uh, if you need help, they'll call them. I'm not their customer service department. Um, but you can see how it works, and you can go through these names. If you have a fast computer, you can go through these names, and, you know, it's all there. It's all there. So, um, and you can catch it in real time. Anyways, let's go and answer some questions. Uh, I'm going to update this one more time intraday. It's a, I think it does it automatically, but I just go ahead and do it anyways because I'm anal retentive, so that's just the way I am. So here we go. Let's get to some questions here. Uh, whoops. Here, go to my charts. No, that wasn't the one I wanted. It's somewhere in here. Here we go. Uh, pull up that and a... Uh, the weekly, where are you, weeklies? Okay. You can see I need to get a nice uh, uh, wallpaper for my new PC that's kind of, you know, that boring blue. It is an ASUS, though, ASUS. You can see here's VA trying to turn here. I think it's going to turn. So uh, I just bought a little. We'll see what happens. Uh, anyways, uh, questions, questions. Uh, ANET. This was a hot IPO. Yeah, it's trying to turn. So you've seen in another roundabout formation. This is what it looks like on the weekly chart. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit choppy and sloppy. Uh, but it's trying to get higher, and he had a viable gap up, I guess. But I, I'm not sure. I don't know about this one. You, if you look at the chart, what you see is some uh, resistance on the left side, overhead. Okay, and, and you can see that that's figuring into the stock's movement on an intraday basis today. And uh, you're, you're uh, running into that. And so it may do what Twitter did, if you recall, because Twitter gapped up and uh, it ran into some resistance from the left side. And then it just kind of drifted in for a couple days. And then uh, you could probably maybe try and buy it there. But i, I got to think there are better names uh, to be in in this market. So maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think that there are better names right now. So I kind of focus there. Uh, let's see. Voodoo on UA. Someone's talking about... Yeah, UA is a voodoo, Under Armour, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, you're seeing it, so you could try and buy those and keep a tight stop, maybe use a 20-day, which it sh is already shown to uh, hold on a pullback. Uh, O'Reilly, I've been, yeah, I noticed this one too, but I don't like this. It's a Bible gap of going nowhere. It should go somewhere by now. You know, it's been over two weeks, so it's a little slow. 
and maybe nobody wants to buy it up here. TSM, you're getting some voodoo action. Yeah, but it's kind of stuck up in the air there. Um, CDK, that's your stock, Dr. K. It's your initials. Indeed. <laughs> Uh, drying up, yeah, I mean, it's drying up along the 10 day, so you guys are getting the idea. Success, success, people are learning. Uh, Taser, also drying up, it's been drying up for a while, though, notice how volume has been below average as it's been moving sideways, so nobody really wants to commit on this thing, and I think what investors are waiting for here is the, uh, stock to, uh, come out with earnings, and then we see where we go, maybe you get a viable gap up, so if you're feeling brave, I'm just going to say, you know, cyber was probably the only stock that I've ever told people to hold into earnings. Buy it and hold it into earnings, especially if you bought the pocket pivot because you had a cushion of a good 15%, I think, by then. Let's take a look at that real quick just to make sure I'm not full of crap. If you bought this pocket pivot, the earnings came out on this day. So actually, here's a breakout attempt, and if you try to buy it there, you'd have no cushion which I think is a little dangerous. Here, though, you're already, you got about a 10%, a little more than that, 10, 12, 13% cushion here to sit through earnings. And my feeling was these guys are going to come out with a good report based on the sudden buying you saw. These, you know, institutions come in and they're buying hand over fist here, and that's telling you that something's up, and sure enough, this thing just continues uh, higher. I think the situation with Basco, you know, I, it's sort of monkey see, monkey do. The other names are moving, and so they want to come after something that hasn't moved. You notice, though, it's starting to turn blue or turn positive on the day. So maybe my theory, unless you guys are on there buying it and pushing it up, uh, maybe my theory about it drying up on the pullback here, and it's trying to hold. See, this is a viable gap up here five days ago. Maybe it's holding, but this is a little bit of the monkey see, monkey do. You know, you see cyber move, but in any case, Cyber was one name I told people to hold in earnings, and uh, I got I have a feeling that you, this one may be one to hold in earnings too. You don't have to be big in it. You know, ten percent is fine. Of course, you'll be pissed off that you don't own thirty percent if it if it jacks the way Cyber did. But uh, if you don't have a cushion on it, my suggestion would be to stick to around ten percent, maybe fifteen if you're feeling really brave, or if you have a nice cushion already in your account because you bought things like Intrex on our cyber, et cetera, et cetera. So data pushing at 100.50, uh, Facebook over 80 again, Grub trying to come back. Maybe you guys are all buying it. Um, somebody says, okay, getting back to the UA, the ORLY, and the TSM, I hesitate to act on those because the market has had a good run recently. I wonder if these will turn around or sit on support for a couple more weeks. Uh, I think they're lower quality names. So I think the key here is to try and distinguish between what's higher quality, what's lower quality. Where are institutions really hot to go? And you could see that cyber and Palo Alto Network's moving on the cybersecurity theme, which is a major theme, I think, for this year. Uh, I think social networking remains a strong theme. And Twitter, you know, monetization of their use, existing user base, which is really what the market, I think, saw because the subscriber growth wasn't all that great. But I think the market sees that they are going to start monetizing their base, which they haven't up until now, and, and there's big potential there. I also think, you know, LinkedIn, uh, same situation, Facebook now moving. So I think social networking remains a major theme. So, you know, TSM is sort of a half-assed semiconductor. O'Reilly is like, you know, what are the other... What are the other names in the group, Dr. K? Uh, uh, the uh, automotive. Oh, what's that? Yeah, I mean, he, he, hold on one second. It's, Just, kind of, uh, it's kind of blah, you know. Um, yeah, anyways, not a whole lot that um, you know really like strike fancy here. You know, it's a small group. AutoZone, um, EVO, that's what I'm thinking of. You know, that's and that's hanging in there. But is this really where yeah. where the driving uh, forces uh, are? I don't really see anything in the group. I mean, there's AAP, you know, but again, nothing, nothing really is getting me going on this. That's you know. doggy, yeah. So, you know, look around and and also th think in terms of uh, thematics. You know, what what's the big theme that's going to drive these things? So, I think it's kind of a no-brainer that cybersecurity is going to drive things. Uh, biotech remains a strong area if you're in the right stocks. Uh, and of course, social networking, and then you got to look around and see where what else is has the potential to uh, rock and roll here. Somebody points out Baba should be renamed B U B U Boo Boo, and it, it is something of a boo boo. But you know, Jack Ma, that is his name, right? Uh, the CEO, he comes out and he downplays and kind of 
says they're not doing anything exciting, and they're obviously not. But again, this is where the 20% rule, you know, stock goes up 20% or more in two to three weeks or something. You hold it for eight weeks. And again, this is another example of the failure of that rule and why you don't need to operate on that basis. So, uh, But now stock seems to be ledging, in other words, forming a bear flag, and uh, looks like it wants to go lower. But you know, maybe if the market takes off here and gets some upside momentum, you notice we're only down 10 now. And we were down like 90 or 100 when we started this webinar. And maybe it turns with the market. But it, I think a lot of people loaded into it, and they, then now they realize they're like too heavy. Uh, but, you know, the crowd goes after something. Uh, that said, Apple continues to go higher. And i got to admit, I'm surprised and uh, impressed by what Apple's able to do. But it is the big cap, you know, technology juggernaut of the new millennium and uh, just continues to hold up and looks like it just wants to go higher. So that's why I'm thinking, you know, companies that maybe supply to them, SWKS is one. I think Cypress does as well. Is that right? No, Cirrus does, sorry. Uh, which is moving higher as well. So these may be the names also to ride along with the Apple phenomenon. Uh, okay, we're pushing data at 100.80 on the offer, so pushing higher. Let's see, what else? Celgene I already looked at. Uh, if you were paying attention, most of the names I already looked at, either on my buy list or on the stocks that are moving, uh, on HGSI that show up on the HGSI warehouse view, uh, they're already, you know, their names you're already asking about. So this one's trying to break out. But that, I don't, you know, there's no buy point here, so I don't know what, what we're supposed to tell you. It's extended. It's trying to break out. If you want to buy it, I guess you could. Someone says, even when you read IBD paper mini chart, mini interpretation. Yeah, but you got to remember, these guys are newspaper writers. In my view, if, if they were so good at trading, they wouldn't be low-paid newspaper writers. They'd be trading and making a lot of money, you know. Uh, I made triple digits last year, so my view is uh, that validates at least my approach to the market currently, and uh, the fact that uh, that's how I make my living pretty much these days, and and I'm not a low-paid newspaper writer. So, in fact, I remember when I was at O'Neill and I was the chief market strategist. Well, actually, when I was the head of the uh, institutional sales group, my salary was four hundred thousand dollars a year, and. Uh, when Bill came in and told me I was getting promoted to chief market strategist, I thought, wow, that's you know, great, sure, why not? And then he told me that my salary would have to drop to $300,000 a year. So O'Neill's the only place where you can be promoted and get a pay cut. So, uh, But, you know, that, it, that didn't bother me. I just made a bunch of money in the market that year. So anyways, uh, somebody says, I never understood the value of the model book. Uh, there, it, it, you know what I think? It has no value. It's all BS. You watch what works in real time, and I like uh, Ian Woodward's approach. Ian's, uh, you know, he's with HGS Investor. He's 82 years old. You gotta love him. Uh, and he'll be at the March conference uh, that I'll be presenting at, at as well in Palos Verdes, California. And I would encourage you all to go. But Ian, his approach is to look at what is working in the market right now. You know, not what worked in 1960, and I'm gonna try and match it up to something. That's BS. It just doesn't work. And no, I, I, my view is the model books are useless. So I'm going to either use mine to, to as fireplace starters or, or maybe I'll sell them to some sucker out there. Uh, anyways, I bought one of the model books earlier last year. It was not helpful. Okay. Don't forget they also have a promotional price, which I caught at $4.99 a year. That's uh, HGSI. Yeah, $4.99 a year. So, you know, and, and these guys are doing what I think, uh, if you're really interested in helping investors, you price things uh, so that they're accessible. So the new book on short selling uh, that we got coming out in April is, is you can buy it for 40 bucks on Amazon. And I think if you buy the hard the the hard copy version, which is a paperback, uh, you get the ebook version. I think for a few bucks. I think that's how Amazon works it. But yeah, I'm, don't quote me on that. But you might check into that. But then you can have the two books for you know 40, 50 bucks accessible on your uh, electronic device, on your iPad, your whatever, uh, your Kindle reader. And then you have the hard copy you can mark up and, and study. And, you know, IBD will charge you 695 bucks for an alleged short-selling course that I don't know who wrote it. Uh, some newspaper writer who's never shorted stocks in their life or made big money short-selling or even uh, even more useful, never been hit pretty good on the short side and learned from some pretty big mistakes, which is really where you learn more about anything anyways. Uh, it's when you screw up. So... 
Well, let's go through some more names. We're about to finish up. We've been going for an hour, but so I'm going to wrap this up real quick. Hopefully you guys got some ideas in here that are useful. TSM, uh, another doggy little semiconductor wouldn't mess with it. RMK, Aramark, the dog wouldn't mess with it. MOH, uh, extended. There's nothing there, so no, nothing you can buy. It's extended. If you bought it, figure out where, what you're doing with it. NVIDIA is uh, going to make graphic chips. This is what it looks like on the weekly chart. This one did hit my radar because it is trying to c come back up. It's on the comeback trail. If you see this, a big cup with handle type move. Viable gap up. I suppose you could see that as actionable using this low at 2187 as a stop. You're, you know, 30, 40 cents away from that now. Uh, I guess if you like it, you could try and buy it. Uh, I don't really know much about this in terms of whatever thematics are, are driving it. So. I couldn't tell you much, and I don't need to. So I've got other stuff that's working just fine. Grub back above 40. What are you guys buying it? SCI, yeah, pulling in, volume drawing up. Looks okay. And going higher. So it looks okay. No buy points. I don't, these all seem like after-the-fact type of stuff. You know, there's a viable gap up. You'd have to buy it there. Use 24 pretty much. Uh, 2394 is your buy point. And... Uh, Pulling back a little bit looks fine. Now, if you want to buy the breakout, I guess you could do that on VIP shops. Uh, but there's your buy, buy, uh, buyable gap up. We already put out a report that day, and so it's moved a little higher from there. And this is what it looks like on the uh, weekly chart. So it's you know it's it's breaking out. So it looks good. But I would have preferred to buy it on the buyable gap up. So that's a good one. Uh, thoughts on Vive? I think I already talked about Vive when I went through my buy list. You know, you have a pocket pivot and you're pulling in. Earnings are coming out in a couple of weeks, I believe. So that's that. Uh, you know, and I'd also point out you don't really need our thoughts. So if you're asking that kind of question, this is pretty obvious to me. Pocket pivot on a sort of a cup with handle breakout and it's pulling in as volume dries out, dries up. Yeah. So if you're new to our website, then I can understand. If you've been around for a while and you need us to interpret this for you, then you're not learning. And you better think about that. Anyways, uh, let's see. I had the short home study from IBD. It's Bill O'Neill talking in a room. Poor quality. Wastes my money. Yeah, probably. And I'm telling you, the new book, uh, you know, I, I uh, put a lot of work into that, trying to make it as vigorous and comprehensive as possible. And it is definitely a, uh, a course in and of itself. And you, it's probably a slow read in that it's pretty thick, and you're going to have to take your time going through it. But I think you'll get a very good sense of short selling for it and uh, would appreciate feedback when it does finally come out. Anyways, last name, EEP, Enbridge is kind of boring. Sloppy base, but, you know, you got a pocket pivot here. Maybe it's trying to come out. I don't know. It's Energy Partners. Not, not sure. It's an LP, so I guess it's more dividend play than anything else. Is that right? Let me check that. Dividend is uh, 228 uh, share annually, so that's 5.8%. Uh, so it's more dividend play. So um, I have broker friends who buy these things because clients love them because they want to get 5% dividend. Uh, unfortunately, if the stock goes down 10%, there goes your dividend for the next two years. But you know who's counting? Uh, anyways, that's all I've got. You got anything to add, Dr. King? I think we're good over here. Yeah, I mean, so I think uh, some good points made today, uh, some good ideas. You know, I'm watching the VAs moving a little higher. Again, remain opportunistic. Don't get thrown by the indexes. Don't get thrown by the news. You can see the Dow's now down two. I think it actually turned green. NASDAQ's uh, green now, up 425. So, you know, the, the news comes out, and you see the market react to the news. It, it sells off, and then it comes back. That's a sign of strength. And you can see as we went through all the names on HDS Investor, which I encourage you all to uh, do yourself because you can. It's accessible. And four ninety nine a year right now as a promotional price is a steal as far as I'm concerned. One cyber will pay for the next 50 years of your uh, HDS Investor. And you would have picked it up there, I believe, on the Pocket Pivot Day as well as our reports. But you want to be opportunistic. You see something acting well, don't chase it. Wait for a pullback into a 10-day moving average on a voodoo-type move or volume dry-up. And just be methodical, be steady, and uh, think about what you're buying in terms of quality and where the driving themes are. And that seems to be uh, the approach that's making money in this market. So on that note, we're going to end this. And uh, thanks for showing up. As always, you guys, we'll catch you next time. Take care. So long, everyone.